Someone once said that Britain is an island built on coal and surrounded by fish. Anyone who could organize a shortage of either would be a fathead. Yet, fish today is dear on the market, and coal and all our other energy sources are in short supply. So, more and more, the nation is concerned with getting more and more coal from where it's easiest to get. The winning of open-cast coal in Britain is becoming increasingly important. In 1969-70, we got six million tons this way. This year, we're aiming for eight million tons. And the plans are to step this up to 10 million tons during 1972. What's involved? You strip off the topsoil first, the vital 12 inches on which plant life depends, and you store it carefully. You work down through the subsoil, and you store that too, separately. Then down through the overburden, to the coal. Where does it happen? Mainly near places where deep mines used to exist and where there's still coal near the surface. Here's one typical site where open cast coal is going to be won. This is Shipley Lake, Nottingham, already partly destroyed by industrial pollution. There's a tip in the background, so there was once a mine here. Coppice, they called it. Now it's closed. But right underneath its derelict buildings and the coal tips and the lake lie over a million tons of coal which couldn't be worked by deep mining. The old Woodside Drift is nearby. No longer does it give an easy slope into profitable coal, but from the land and from its shallow buried riches, that million plus tons will be extracted over the next three years. Here's another one, Haig Colliery, long dead. Today, the mine is an industrial derelict, an eyesore to the community but still more than 100,000 tons of coal are to be got here, and more important, while excavation goes on, so does reclamation. Today, it all looks like a battlefield. In a year's time, the land will be restored to look as it did more than a century ago. Ratcliffe Village is clustered round an exhausted colliery. People still live here in semi-rural slums. Sanitation is deficient. So even is the water supply. Today there are plans to mine two million tons of coal from under Ratcliffe and to build a new life for the people who inhabit it. The machines are poised. The legacy of the 19th century is overripe to tumble. So there'll be new houses for Ratcliffe folk, a new village at nearby Amble, where people are already starting to come into a new inheritance. Geordie Webb and his wife, he did 51 years in mining, will be glad to exchange his terraced house for a place of his own where old people's needs have been built into the planning. The product of collaboration between the coal board the unions and the local authorities. Industrial dereliction in Britain today is a national problem, not regional, not tied to any one industry. It's all over. There's a job to be done, a big job in reclaiming these derelict areas and in restoring vast tracts of Britain to their original beauty. It's a job that is going to take years years of productive work to wipe out the destruction of decades. As far as mining is concerned, the job is on now, and it's being tackled by many machines and relatively few men. At Shipley Lake, for example, 146 men with power to their elbow are reshaping the scene and winning 7,000 tons of coal a week. While they're working, no one can deny that they make a mess. 
You can't get a million tons or more of coal from under the surface without disturbing the topography. So what's done in open cast mining is to make the men at work as inconspicuous as possible. We have to restore the land to make it in fact better than it was before and screen the workings while they are in progress. That's where trees come in. Today, Britain's mining industry is in the nursery business. Tree nurseries. Thousands of young trees are being grown for use not only in screening untidy industrial sites, but to be used in landscaping and in the restoration of the countryside. The two precious levels of soil, subsoil and topsoil, are replaced, and they're contoured and shaped to fit in with the surrounding countryside. Open cast mining borrows from the land, but it repays with interest. Then it's the turn of the trees. Today we have the machinery and the know-how to transplant mature trees up to 40 feet in height and to ensure that they will flourish in their new homes. Today we have a new opportunity which was last exercised in the 18th century to bring a fresh order and beauty to the British landscape. Under all these stretches of country, open cast coal has been won. Today they're restored and enhanced. Machines and men took away their hidden riches. Men and machines, more importantly, made it possible for them to be refurbished. machines that make possible the miracles of transformation and reclamation which are now part of the pattern we live. In Northumberland is the biggest of the lot. It is controlled by men, for men still have to have the final say-so. It's called Big Geordie and it's ten times bigger than any other machine. A hundred tons at a bite can go into this bucket. The boom is 265 feet long. Today, Big Geordie is making it possible to win coal, which we all need. Tomorrow, Big Geordie will be busy reshaping an underdeveloped sector of the Northeast, opening up a stretch of coastline up until now inaccessible to the public at large. Where there were no roads, roads there will be. Where there was open cast coal to be won, there will be crops and cattle and marinas and a new lakeland recreation area for the people who live in the cities of the northeast. Men and machines are carrying out transformations like these all over these islands. Over the centuries, Britain has been reshaped and remade. Men made the shapes and the contours of the country. Today, out of production born from our needs, the process goes on. Mm -hmm.